Zelda producer H. L. Numa's confession to GameSpot has some big implications. Honestly, he told the website, I'm getting to the point in my career where I have to think about what sorts of things I want to do and how much time I have left before retirement. I've certainly enjoyed all the time that I've spent working on the Zelda games. Even when it's a struggle, I've absolutely enjoyed it. But I'm probably not too far from retirement. I should start to think about a successor, someone who can take over all of this. That's a very important decision, but one of the things that is bouncing around in my head on a daily basis as I work. And when did he make this hugely significant statement? 2015. Well, retirement doesn't seem to have laid a glove on Anoma yet, but he has now passed the Japanese retirement age of 60. As outlined in my separate video, it's clear that the heir apparent is Hidemaru Fujibashi, the masterful director of Skyward Sword, Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, who also directed innumerable handheld Zeldas going back to his mid-twenties. Nobody has ever directed as many Zeldas as Fujibashi-san, and the man's confidence and determination setting the course of the franchise has taken it to unparalleled heights, with Tears of the Kingdom taking mere days to exceed the lifetime sales of Twilight Princess, until recently a high watermark of the franchise. It seems like a sure thing that Fujibashi will shoulder more and more responsibility until he one day takes the reins from Aonuma. And right at the start, I'm forecasting this as a 70% likelihood, highly likely, that when Aonuma-san takes over, Fujibashi will get the nod. But what if that's not the case? After all, there are people at Nintendo who seem to move through game designing and onto more senior and producerial roles quite happily, but Fujibashi-san has been the director of games for a quarter century. The role seemed to suit his personality as he can be by turns tenacious, collaborative and decisive as my recent deep dive into his personality and history demonstrates. But producer is a very different role. He wouldn't be calling the shots on the granular details of each game, but would have a more big picture, supervisory role. Would that suit him? And what does Nintendo do if the man offered the keys to the kingdom turn them down. Let's review the options. The most obvious candidate in terms of seniority, if it's not going to be Hidemaru Fujibashi, is Daiki Aramoto. Three years older than Fujibashi-san, he got his start in Nintendo in 1996 working on Star Fox 2 and has been a stalwart of the Zelda game since Ocarina of Time. When Fujibashi joined Nintendo from Capcom, Iwamoto was already directing Phantom Hourglass, leaving Fujibashi's path clear to take on Skyward Sword. After Phantom Hourglass was completed, Iwamoto directed Spirit Tracks before taking a supervisory role on Link Between Worlds, the role of assistant director on Breath of the Wild, and assistant producer on Tears of the Kingdom. In many ways, Iwamoto's sound seems a more natural fit for the producer role given his more diverse experience, not just in designing games, and he has the seniority to fit. He also has seen what happens when game development goes down the wrong track, explained to Satoru Iwata during an Iwata R segment on Spirit Tracks, that it was like a giant tea table had been upended when Eiji Onuma decided that Spirit Tracks should not involve the player actually laying train tracks when the team found that people didn't really know where to put the tracks and couldn't then follow along the next stage of the story. It's striking that while Tears of the Kingdom was, by Onuma's own confession, a tricky game, this seems to be to do with the testing requirements rather than issues with the planning and execution. Thinking back to Fujibashi's arrival on Phantom Hourglass, Fujibashi was sceptical of the scope that Iwamoto had set out when he joined, all of which gives the impression that while Iwamoto-san is a respected director and a key figure in the Zelda team with much experience, he doesn't seem to have had quite the Midas touch of Anuma and Fujibashi. Still, if the next Zelda producer is not Fujibashi, I'd say there's a high chance, around 70%, that it will be Iwamoto. But maybe they'll skip a generation entirely. For a franchise as vast and complicated and essential to Nintendo's success as The Legend of Zelda, this may seem impossible to imagine, but let's recognise that Nintendo's ability to keep and develop talent over a very long time, not just over years but decades, means that they are supremely well placed to weather most eventualities. If Fujibashi-san stuck with shepherding the mainline Zeldas, that would be one of the hugest and most complex roles in the company history in safe hands, so a more junior producer would have some degree of a safety net in adjusting to the role knowing that his main director could firefight a lot of issues by himself. So looking at more junior figures in the orbit of the Zelda team, there are a few obvious candidates. One is Tears of the Kingdom's assistant director, Yuya Sato. Never having been credited as a game director himself, Sato nevertheless has had a range of roles on games since 
Mario and Sonic, working as a producer and then attending the so-called Mario Cram School in which Takashi Tezuka decided to lead a set of lessons for people across the company on the core principles of design in 2D Mario, leading to the release of New Super Mario Bros. Wii. If, as seems to be the case, Yuya Sato, straight from university when he joined Nintendo in 2006, it would be a very significant generational leap after Anuma. But, the vast timescales of Zelda games means it would make sense. After all, the 10-year age gap between Fujibayashi-san and Anuma-san may seem quite large, but that's really only one or maximum two Zelda development cycles. Nintendo has shown a willingness to accept younger members of staff into senior roles before, and not just with Fujibayashi. Kenta Motokura was in his 30s when he took over as the director of Super Mario 3D World and has been directing Nintendo's other biggest franchise ever since in the form of 3D Mario. Even though Yuya Sato hasn't directed the game himself, being an assistant director on a project as vast as Tears of the Kingdom can only class as a world-class schooling in game design and management, and having a breadth of experience in different areas of the company might put him in a good position. However, another rising star at Nintendo is perhaps even more likely to figure big in the future of the Zelda franchise is Takahiro Dota. In his 40s, though I can't find an exact age, Dota may be familiar to fans from Nintendo's recent Ask the Developer interviews. The technical director of Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, Dota has clearly been a trusted figure by Nintendo for a long time, starting his career in 2003 with responsibility for Nintendo DS's tech demos and lending programming support to some of the biggest games Nintendo has ever put out, including Mario Kart Wii, the Wii Sports titles and multiple Zeldas. A games company like Nintendo needs people with truly strong grasps of technology, and he might be the perfect complement to Fujibashi if the latter remains in Scott's as director, since for all Fujibashi's love of gadgets and machines, he is a literature graduate and not from a technical discipline. The fact that Dota's credits read like a list of the most crucial and largest selling Nintendo games of the last two decades show that he is clearly highly valued and trusted, and so would doubtless be in a strong position to advocate for his own promotion. There's no doubt that he's done his due diligence with a decade working in broadly the same role on Zelda, so even if he doesn't take over A.J. Numa's position, I wouldn't be at all surprised to see him being given more senior responsibilities somewhere across the company in the years to come. One more potential candidate I'll mention briefly, and another Ask the Developer interviewee, is art director Satoru Takizawa. Nintendo has a tradition of people from art backgrounds being promoted up. Senior executive Yoshiaki Korizumi started as an artist, as did 3D Mario director Kenta Motokura and Metroid Prime and Paper Mario producer Kensuke Tanabe. In his 50s, Takizawa did serve as a supervisor on Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, but his credits are almost exclusively in the field of art, and while I'm sure Nintendo would train people up in new skill sets, I rather doubt at this point in his career a move into such a senior position is on the cards. Therefore, he's a briefer mention, although not as brief as a few other erstwhile leading lights of the franchise, whose time now seems to have passed, a link between Wells director Hiromasa Shikata, who hasn't been credited on a Nintendo game since 2015 and so may no longer be at the company at all, and longtime Zelda assistant director Kentaro Tomenaga, who definitely left the company in 2022 to join Paper Games. Yes, while I maintain we should expect Hidamaru Fujibashi to sweep to the throne, my second place bet would go to Takahiro Dota, who seems well placed to achieve a very high position indeed in the company in years to come. But let me know, have I missed anybody? Do you have any other suggestions for who might take over this fantastic franchise? Thank you for watching and see you next time.